All right, what's going on? Back with another video, and today we're going to be modifying the Gallivanter Baller ST. It's clearly meant to be a Range Rover of some sort. I don't follow Range Rover, so I have no idea as to what model trim it's meant to be, but I have a feeling it's meant to be probably the most powerful, sportiest model that they offer. It actually is quite a fair deal of modifications that you can do to it, and the one thing that I like but also don't like, because when you have SUVs, there are only, they're only so many different shapes that you can have, so they start to blend into one another, is these little hood scoops here. And it reminds me so much, not in a bad way, of course, of a Jeep. A Jeep SRT8 or a Trackhawk. But anyway, I made my character appear uh, to be from Beverly Hills because I think those are the types of people that drive these, right? I mean, they're unbelievably expensive cars. Much more than people realize. These, these are very pricey vehicles. So let's get to modifying. I'm going to go through menu because it's just easier, I guess, if you're doing it on a computer. So first things first, I guess we'll go with the color. And I remember Range Rover used to have a very rare color, but I could not find it because I've modified this a little bit before. And it was this beautiful, it was almost like if you've ever seen a Corvette in the color Atomic Orange. So it's a very unique orange with a ton of metal flake in it. And it's not bright like that. It was more like this color. And I don't mind it, but I, I think it's a little too much. It's um, It doesn't have that cool orange or expensive orange that the other one had. So we'll go with some type of red. I actually think that this red is just beautiful. Very classy looking, uh, a little bit darker. And now we have to do the pearlescent. Can we do something that'll brighten it up? There we go. So that kind of gives us that metallic sheen. And <laughs> that sounds like a band name. Where do you play? Yeah, we're going to be at the club tomorrow. I'm uh, a, a metallic sheen. And uh, yeah, we'll lower it a little bit. Sometimes that low is just too low. I know it's a video game, but even you got to look at that and say, nah, that you just be rubbing everywhere. It's not a, <laughs> it wouldn't even be a usable vehicle at that point. The roof, I think the roof is fine as it is. I don't know what those little carbon fiber things are, but I should know. But honest to God, I don't. But we'll add them because carbon fiber makes everything better and more expensive. This time around... The painted mirrors kind of bring the car together more. Um, no sun strip. I think it's cool that they added that, but it's really just a hindrance to your visibility. And here's what I was talking about. Tell me, that doesn't look like a Jeep hood. Like if you were to be looking down on that, it does kind of remind you of a Trackhawk, an SRT8. The Cherokee is what I'm talking about, the Grand Cherokee. So I will keep the carbon stripe. You know what? No, no I won't. We're going to make it look nice, but yeah, that looks so much like a Jeep, it's not even funny to me. And okay, the intercoolers with the fans, yeah, why not? No roll cage, I don't understand a roll cage in an SUV, but hey, it's another modification you can have. Those exhaust tips look mean, almost a little aftermarket to the point where it's like they ran out of exhaust tips and they didn't know what to put on it. Um, that probably looks better because I think four is usually better than two just as how people like center exit exhausts and things like that. But we'll do the single because let's be a little bit different. The race skirts, of course. The bumper painted. Nah, the carbon fiber looks better. Uh, the front bumper... Yeah, a little, a little aggressive splitter is fine. The spoiler, I like that. Because it still feels like an SUV. It hasn't totally abandoned its purpose yet. Now the best part is the wheels. I'm actually going to try street. Trust me, I have an idea. So these cars, I, I can't 
say it enough. When you have a car like this, I don't know what the drivetrain is or if it's all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, but a lot of them don't ride around on skinny little tires. They have what makes it look even nastier, which is actually kind of fat tires. I think I'm going to go with that. I get it. Like, you know, th this whole time we're talking about trying to make it look classy and elegant, but I think that looks like a bad car, man. That looks tough. Uh, custom tires, we already have that. Bulletproof, why not? We're rich. We can just throw things at it. What do you think of red on red? Would that be foolish? Uh, it's a little gaudy. Black on red, I think, is just going to have to be the go-to. What kind of livery? No, we don't. I've cycled through them. It's not happening. Uh, the dash color, uh, does it even change anything? I don't see any change, but light gray, just in case there's an accent. And of course, the headlights and the turbo. So I think we got it pretty figured out. It's always fun to check the extras, uh, dark smoke. So let's get out and look at this thing and you know, really see if we've got a nice little work of art on our hands. Yeah, I think that is a bad looking car. The wheels totally completed. That looks bad, man. Okay, definitely slacking on the interior for for a Range Rover. But uh hey, it's got three pedals, which is cool. It's a manual. Look at that engine. Probably a twin turbo V8. Again, I don't know these cars at all. I can only assume. And we'll get these doors closed. Do they close? No, they don't. Okay, I got a lemon. And plenty of trunk space. So let's get it out on the road. Let's go for some top speed. I don't think that it's mind-blowingly fast. But because it is an SUV, uh, you know, a little bit of speed kind of counts for a lot. Because you're carrying four people. And of course, online in missions, this will be a utilitarian vehicle. Unless, of course, you're incinerated by somebody on a flying motorcycle. What can we hit? 109. Not horribly impressive. How about downhill? One eleven. Yeah, I was expecting more. Not gonna lie. I was hoping for about a... <laughs> maybe 120? Something along those lines. Now we're on the back roads here. And of course, this is probably... This truck's natural environment. Maybe, maybe not. Range Rovers can obviously go off-road. Sorry. Gallivanters can obviously go off-road. So let's put it to a test. Let's see what we can do. The suspension will not come in handy, nor will the tires, which are maybe slicks. Let's go through here. What do we have in first person? Not bad. Strange type of refractions on the window, but we make it. Yes, but with very minimal comfort. It, it does fit in here. It really does. I think that this... is where this class of vehicle should be... more than a... more than a racetrack. <laughs> Just rolling through the mud. Yeah, we're testing the, uh... <laughs> we're testing the integrity of the vehicle. We've probably bottomed out by now, and, uh, blown up in the oil pan. Yeah, it really handles well. Just grips the road, and I know that the, uh, the tires are irrelevant. Which is nice, because you can have great-looking wheels on it, with sporty tires. And not sacrifice any of the performance. Now see, this is a car, much like the review I did before, the Ferrari FF, that is luxury, but is certainly designed 
to be exposed to the inclement weather. It's not meant to hide away. But you can have a car that can rip through the snow with a couple hundred horsepower. There's no reason why you can't have both. You just need to have a big enough wallet and uh, some would argue maybe a small enough brain. I'm kidding. But it fits right in. When the Grand Theft Auto V Christmas update comes out New Year's and it's snowing all the time, I do wonder what people pick for their types of vehicle, their, their choice that they have of what they think fits in that climate, if it's off-roading, if it's, uh, I don't know, if maybe it's kind of ironic in a sense to just drive a, a sports car, or if they pick huge SUVs like this one. So now I think the next step is to go up against some other SUVs in a race, maybe one that I've configured or that's already pre-configured in the mod that I'm using. But again, it will be the same class. I hope this thing can hang in there. And let's have some fun. Here we have it. A race to test what this little baller's got. I think I know what this track is like. And if we don't have a good top speed, we are in trouble. I will tell you that much. I didn't mean to do it in the snow, but now that we're here, we might as well adapt. And plus, what a better test of its abilities. Okay, so I'm going to lay this out for you. The straightaways are going to be the hardest part. But because you're a human being and not AI, you're going to be able to kind of circumvent that by approaching the corners slowly. There's one corner that before you approach it, you go off this huge, huge jump. It's the railway track. And these fools just... I don't know. I, I assume uh, their goal is not crossing the finish line, but achieving the maximum altitude. So they just launch off. And they end up in people's backyards and, uh, you know, living rooms and rolling over. Of course, this is my plan. That's, that's the way I hope to win. The car has a lot in it. I think it actually may have the highest top speed because we're so modified. But then there's me, driving it. And that's where the issue comes in. <laughs> I love that, the snow you can hear. Hitting the under, uh, the underneath of the car. Yeah, look, 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 here we go. Oh my gosh, I was wrong. My, my plan has failed. But, uh... Maybe we can get him by the end of it. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to catch up. Unless you dive bomb the corners. Which usually isn't a good mood, mo move. It's usually not a good tactic. Only there was nitrous. No, 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 dude. You're going to... Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. We can do it. Told you. They only know how to drive straight. The, the notion of turning the wheel one way or another is... Uh, <laughs> it's a foreign language. Gotta let him know you're coming up on him. Don't spin out. Oh, he took it pretty wide. I guess to not bleed off too much speed. There's a bus. Again, it's another thing that they don't understand. They don't understand obstacles, turning, braking. Oh, that guy does. Yeah, his car is fast, so we will have to play dirty. I think we know how this ends, probably. I think it ends with me getting a rush of confidence and then having this freak, who I've been making fun of the whole time, come up and pass me. But I don't think that's going to happen because he's not a real person. Uh, there are no real, real world repercussions, so maybe I'll, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, act like, oh my god, did I ruin it? No, we can still do it. We can still do it. Now he's ramming me. I guess they were working together. Two beautiful cars, though. That one is arguably more... I don't know. Artistic. All the angularity on the front. This is more simplistic, but hey. 
probably cheaper too. No, 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 dude, 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 don't, don't. See, it's hard to ram them off the road because you're afraid if you do it too early, they end up uh, T-boning you. Okay, so I pretty much blew it with the race. That was, uh, it got too ballsy and ended up falling to last place. Regardless, awesome car, very good looking, probably affordable, no idea what the price is. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.